in Madrid or in Barcelona when you talk about alternative locations or alternative uh, sub-markets, there is a clear, uh, there's something to be uh, clear up, which is distances in Madrid and Barcelona are, are really nothing to do with, with London. When we talk about the outskirts of Madrid, which is literally out of the M30 ring road, is literally one kilometer away from the four towers. So distances and the, and the airport is just 10 kilometers away from the center. So when you talk about alternative locations for decentralized uh, business parks, the communications and transport and, and, and the commuting is uh, so close that really is, 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 is nothing to be aware, uh, afraid of and uh, definitely something to, that is being monitorized by, by international investors. What happens is that the rental growth we are expecting, as there's been no pipeline at all during the last seven years, almost no pipeline, and uh, there's been no speculative developments, there is a scarcity of new product. But at the same time, there was an overstock on some areas within Madrid and within Barcelona that it still has to be absorbed. Therefore, when we see the rents going up, there's going to be a clear impact on rents CVD in the short term. And it will immediately, once we get to the level of 30s that we were saying, it will immediately impact on the, on the second tier, on the, on the second, let's say, alternative locations for, for offices, which happens the same time in the industrial when the, the prime locations are being absorbed and the vacancy rates are below uh, 7 to 5%, definitely is just immediately impacted. So I would say that internationals are interested on almost all areas. And as it is extremely difficult to find industrial or core uh, locations within offices, that would driven, drive them to, to, towards other alternative locations, which is definitely a, a good mix of capital values and potential rental growth as well.